Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Scoring Big in Water Management, How a Winning Playbook and the Right Technology Ensures Victory Before, During, and After Your AMI Deployment. I'm Kevin Westerling, your host from Water Online. With me today, I have Joe Ball, Vice President, Product Management and Business Development from Camstra, Marla St. Leon, Business and Customer Service Assistant Manager from El Paso, Texas Water Utility, Inc., Alfredo Alamon, Utility Meter Shop Supervisor from El Paso Water Utility, and Mike Jones, General Manager from Millcrofton, Tennessee Utility District. Over the next 45 minutes, they'll be discussing strategies and solutions for a seamless and effective advanced metering infrastructure deployment. After their presentation, we'll be holding a live Q&A session. Feel free to submit questions as we go along. We'll get to as many as we can during the Q&A and any that we can't get to, we'll follow up on after the event. If you run into any issues, please re try refreshing your browser first. And if you need any additional support, submit a question via the Q&A. Finally, the webinar will be available for on-demand viewing. You'll receive a link via email as soon as it's available. With that said, I'm gonna turn it over to Joe to get us started. Joe? Thanks, Thanks Kevin. Good morning, everyone. As Kevin mentioned, uh, my name is Joe Ball, and I'm the Vice President of our Product Management and Business Development Team for North America at Camstra. I'm really excited about this webinar today because we have two great Camstra customers, El Paso Water and Milcrofton, that are going to share their stories with you today. But before I hand it off to the El Paso team for their presentation, I just want to take a minute or two to talk to you a little bit about uh, AMI projects in North America. So over the last several years, we've seen many water utilities um, procure and deploy AMI technology, and they've met many of these business drivers that you see on the slide right now by deploying that technology. But they didn't hit all of these business drivers. And what's really making me excited uh, as a technology guy is over the last two and a half years, we've seen some movement in the next wave of water utilities that are uh, looking at AMI because they're starting to look at even more innovative technology like Camstrip's ultrasonic meters. So they're moving away from 100-year-old positive displacement metering technology and moving to and selecting Camstrip's ultrasonic meter, meter that's proven. It gives you low flow measurement accuracy over 20 years and even an embedded distribution leak detection solution within that meter. So it gives you the ability to not only meet these business drivers, uh, for your operational efficiency, your employee safety, but it also gives the ability to monitor your distribution network for 20 years. It gives you the ability to identify leaks that are in your system, and it gives you the ability to prioritize those that uh, maintenance of your pipe to have you significantly reduce your water loss in your system. So that's some of the information you're going to hear uh, from uh, El Paso Water and Neil Crockland today. So I'm just now going to hand it over to the El Paso Water team and let uh, Marla and Alfredo tell their story. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having us here. Uh, like Joe mentioned, uh, I'm from El Paso Water. My name is Alfredo Alemán. I'm a utility meter shop supervisor. Uh, my responsibilities lie on asset management and as well as responsible for um, large meter installations throughout the city. Um, here with me is uh, my colleague. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Marla St. Leon. Um, I'm the Business and Customer Service Assistant Manager for El Paso Water in El Paso, Texas, and I oversee all of the small and large meter installations, plus I'm the project manager for the AMI conversion for our full city. As Joe mentioned, AMI has been around for a while, but through all the improvements in the technology, AMI has become the perfect solution to water conservation and distribution loss prevention, which is a thing that is pretty hot topic here in the Southwest. Understanding the city of El Paso and the water supply. El Paso, Texas is no stranger to water issues. We're located in the Chihuahuan Desert with the southern tip of the Rocky Mountain Range splitting our city in half. We border two countries, two states, and three cities with Las Cruces, New Mexico to our west, what is Chihuahua to um, uh, Mexico to our south. These challenges are noticeable in our water supply, 
They're hard on our infrastructure and they're even harder on the meters. When El Paso Water began accepting bids for a new meter, they developed a scorecard to help prioritize their options, which included Camstrup as, as one of the uh, options. The scorecard consisted of um, a warranty, testing data, test port availability, and the unit cost. Camstrup outscored all the other vendors. And as El Paso Water dug deeper, we found that the Camstrup meter exceeded the criteria in every way. Previously for our RF solution, we used Badger meter. It wasn't a very good solution for us because of the wired transponders that were easily damaged, especially with the type of conditions that we experience here in El Paso. They were easily tampered with as well. When Camstrip was first brought on board, it was essentially to address meter reader safety. Because of some of the, some of the systems that we had here in El Paso, Texas, RF meters were not generally used within El Paso city limits. They, were, they had a tendency of being used on the outside county areas. And that was the only place where we utilized RF meters. When I first came on board, I noticed that the uh, meter readers were having to put themselves, when reading inside the city, had to put themselves in situations that were very dangerous. So I wanted to find a solution that was going to improve meter reader safety. Um, they used to have to cross busy streets. They used to have to try to get these reads, and it just seemed it just seemed more like a like a like a better idea to find us a, a meter that was not going to have to require them to go and have a direct read, and rather something that was going to be more either AMR or AMI. After a few years of having uh, the camp strip meters installed in the medians, um, their other benefits were becoming more and more prevalent. Safety, although extremely important to El Paso water, became something that was automatically solved and no longer needed to be part of the forefront. It was one of those situations where once you put that camp strip meter in the ground, you knew safety was no longer going to be something that was an issue. It was something that was very important to us still, but had already been resolved. All the tremendous benefits of the AMI solution, which included safety, were what we could not, not help but focus on. In 2022, El Paso Water declared Camstrup its sole source provider for 10 years, which should be more than enough time for us to finish our full city conversion. The ALD technology that is in a part of the Camstrup solution is um, something that has been significant for El Paso in locating service line leaks and main leaks. This allows us to be proactive rather than reactive after so much damage has already been done. We've had situations where there's been main breaks and as all of you have, have been a witness to have been a party to, you've got hundreds of thousands if not millions of gallons running down the street. All those, all those gallons of water causing damage, property damage to surrounding uh, properties, whether it's residential properties or commercial properties. Not to mention various sinkholes. Uh, one of our most major uh, main breaks that we had recently was a massive sinkhole that was formed and a customer, uh, a, a community member vehicle fell into the sinkhole and was nearly drowned. The beautiful part about ALD and the Camstrip solution is that all of that can be preventable. We can prevent those kinds of things from happening, especially when there's possible um, there's possible uh, uh, ability for us to go and do preventative maintenance to prevent those kinds of situations from happening so that we don't have the liability of community members possibly drowning in sinkholes, so that we don't have all of these uh, uh, property damages that, that can be caused with all of the water that is uh, going throughout the, 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 through the streets and ruining and uh, all sorts of property. This is something that, that is, is major to El Paso water as we have had in many times, um, we don't we don't have water that's that's coming through freely. We don't have we're we're not we don't have the ability to have water um, um, under our under our feet coming through our rivers. We don't have a, t a ton of groundwater and surface water. So every bit of conservation that we can do to uh, prevent water loss, everything that we can do to conserve this precious uh, a commodity of ours. Is something that we need to to do and, and camp strip meter and the ald uh, feature in the camp strip meter has been something that has been completely priceless to us
Now, um, <clears throat> we are getting into our commercial meter deployment. Um, like Marla said, we did. Uh, we are utilizing the AMI system for our meters, and in doing so, it's going to be a, a benefit to um, our meter readers with that AMI system. Now, our commercial deployment started about a year ago, uh, the beginning of 2023, and um, we have started targeting certain areas, uh, com heavily, heavily commercial areas to uh, limit the need for meter readers to go out there. Uh, plus, it also has the effect of uh, increasing revenue just due to the types of meters that we're installing. Uh, we've presented uh, also with challenges on uh, communication with these large meters, uh, exploring the, uh, the capability or the connectivity of these, uh, these meters and getting so where we're having to think about where we're going to be placing these antennas. Sometimes it's on the meter lid, sometimes it's off-site. Um, it also depends on, on the, one of the other things that we're actually thinking about too is, is, the, <clears throat> is, is the view or basically where we're putting these because of, of the landscaping. Certain, certain commercial uh, businesses tend to favor uh, better landscaping or better, a better view of their uh, premise. So we have a little bit of a challenge going into that. Um, one of the things that we're also uh, I guess uh, coming across is the the challenges that we've seen with uh, these meters installations. Uh, one of the first things that we saw when we received uh, the, these large meters is a certain uh, lip, uh, raised lip at the end of these meters. And uh, it did present challenges with gaskets and our infrastructure. It didn't really seem to match well. Uh, we did discuss that with Camstrup. Um, they did uh, listen and, and uh, and react and they have fixed that issue for us. Um, we are actually in discussions further with uh, Camstrup with some of these other issues that we, we faced. Um, we did, like I said, we did start our large commercial uh, deployment last year. Uh, with that, we, we installed a 4200 series, which is a, a six inch meter Camstrup produced. And with that, it actually, uh, the challenge that brought to us was the, the assembly part. Uh, we had, it comes with detachable flanges and uh, something that we weren't used to. So it, it took us a couple of weeks to, to kind of uh, look look to see how we can assemble this and what uh, our infrastructure is in need of. In need of. Uh, so we did go ahead and put uh, some strainers on there, some uh, test ports on there, just so that we can uh, we can par uh, assemble it and install it in the in the pro in the in the process that we're used to. Um, when we saw some of these new meters come in, come in uh, we saw the, the lay length in a different size. Um, we also didn't see strainers and test ports, but due to our infrastructure and our water quality, uh, there was some choices that we did have to make. Uh, and we are working with, uh, with Camstrup on uh, perhaps um, discussing further some of these challenges that we, we have and maybe perhaps incorporating those solutions into these Camstrup meters. Um, and we do see some positive uh, feedback and some positive uh, conversations, especially scheduled in the future. Uh, but with that being said, uh, although we had some difficulties with some of these uh, assemblies, I believe we're, we're, in a, we're in a place now where we actually have uh, a certain process. We have a setup. Uh, we're standardizing our, our assembly, and uh, we are going forward with some of these, uh, these installations. Now, one of the effects that these installation these installations have is that we're finding that when we're installing some of these commercial meters, now of course currently we're we're in a we're in a state where we're actually uh, we have uh, proactive meter changes and reactive meter changes, mm -hmm. and it, it is a word some words uh, the phase uh, a phrase that we're actually working on. Proactive is actually something we're we're working on here at the utilities, so it's uh, it's something that we're we're getting used to. But in uh, that being said, what we're experiencing is the two different uh, effects that the proactive um, meter changes have and the reactive meter changes have. In one way, the reactive meter changes is when we're uh, addressing stopped meters and we're changing them up uh, with Camstrup. Now, one of the features that we're um, we're using with Camstrup is uh, simply the connectivity, the connectivity and uh, the consumption data that uh, Camstrup holds. What we're finding is uh, when we go out there, we, we, 
we replace a soft meter, we are able to go back the next day and uh, look up at, our, at the system and see the, the consumption that has been taking place uh, before the meter change and after the meter change. Uh, and in doing so, sometimes we are finding that there are um, existing issues that are, are there present at the, at the commercial uh, establishment. So what we're seeing is we, we're having the ability to go back to our customers after a meter change and recognizing if there's an issue. So we're able to tell our customers if, uh, if that issue exists and then have, give them, provide them the data to kind of back that up and then giving them the opportunity to address those issues and then going back and, and providing more data to, um, to address you know, whatever it is that we found. Uh, so that that is something that actually we're exploring, and we're we're still driving uh, that process uh, to try to kind of uh, you know uh, make it a, a lot a lot simpler and a lot easier to to do. Um, the other thing that we're doing is <clears throat> with these large commercial uh, meters installed, uh, we're actually also exploring uh, the histogram, um, I guess, feature on these these meters. Uh, basically just kind of letting us know what kind of flow rate is happening. Um, something that I, I don't believe we were able to do before. And um, what's happening with those is that, uh, and I, I guess uh, one, of the, one of the stories I can say is uh, we did have two large meters installed at uh, our local university, uh, the University of Texas at El Paso. And we installed them last year there were two dorm buildings, so basically residential halls, and they were side by side. Now, currently, those two meters don't have any connectivity, uh, so we don't, we aren't able to actually, uh, you know, uh, retrieve that data remotely. But uh, regardless, we did revisit that site recently just to kind of get that histogram um, data and just to kind of compare that consumption to what was previously previously going on. And in doing so, we found that there was issue codes uh, already, um, you know, being identified by the meter, and we were able to extract that information as well as uh, the histogram, and we were able to uh, let the customer know that there was an issue there at this residential dorm uh, hall, and the the neat part was that it, they were side by side, so we were able, to, although you know, people's habits and and uh, and you know people's usage are vary, uh, for the most part, you, you could see two buildings with the same amount of residents, uh, same type meters, same intentional use, and uh, you could see the difference in what was happening. Uh, one actually had a leak somewhere in, this, in the building and the other one did not. And we were able to extract that information and present it to the university so that they can uh, use that information to go further and, <clears throat> and fix those issues. Uh, in doing so, we also recognize that there's actually an effect that's happening here. We, we're looking at, um, at addressing those issues with the customer, with, which we now can see and also are being uh, recorded uh, or at least being cons um, recorded by the meter. So that revenue does not, there's no loss in that revenue. But the effect uh, happens where the transition, where the customer is able to make those repairs now we're working on the water loss issues. So once we are able to confirm that those repairs are made, there then it transitions to a water loss, uh, I guess, um, issue. So we're able to address the, uh, I guess, uh, the loss of resource with the consumption. Uh, we're able to address the, the problems that the customer may have. We're able to address the uh, information needed by customers, uh, upper management, or whoever uh, May is asking. And uh, we're also able to address water loss in, um, in, in this whole process. And there's probably f more that is, is going to be explored uh, and found the more and more we, we actually begin to work with Camstrup and begin to um, really, really look at the software and, and try to connect it to those who, who, who would and will need it. Uh, but that's that's basically um, you know where our commercial and our are basically our, our deployment for our large commercial um, you know uh, program lies. I did want to mention also how our residential meters and the residents are uh, are benefiting from the use of the camp strip meter. 
currently because the deployment of the full city conversion is only, we, we really have a, a very long way to go before completion, before even 50%. But already we are noticing the return on the investment for, that the meter has, per, has provided for the utility. Our customers are able to uh, receive any alerts that uh, the, the uh, meter discovers, whether it's a, a, a leak alert or whether it's a tampering alert or whether it's a reverse flow alert. All of these things are completely critical to the utility to know but they're also very important for our customers to know. This, this uh, meter provides us the ability to give the best customer support to, to our uh, customers, to our community, and let them know people can, um, people can, uh, can conserve water for, for two special reasons. They're conserving water because it matters to them to, to keep um, such a precious resource in full demand whenever they have it. But it also matters to them because we have a, a large amount of our community members that are underneath the poverty level, below the poverty level. And so that can also help them to want to conserve water as well if they want to, to help with their bills. Whenever you have a leak, and an undetected leak for that matter, whenever you have a leak, this can be costly to the customer. The leak will never get better. It only gets worse and worse and worse, and thereby eventually causing a, a, a additional property damage aside from the leak itself. When that happens, when you're able to provide this information to a customer, that they may have a property issue. And then we send our, investi our investigators out to uh, the property to attempt to locate the, the area of the leak. We can help that customer so much sooner than, than would have happened if that leak was left undetected for months and months and months at a time, which it would only have gotten worse and would have made a great deal of trouble for the customer. Um, I guess all in all, the the, the solutions that we have had have all been on, under leak management, protecting our water supply and our basic customer support. Whatever whatever it is that Campstrup has done, um, even though the solution has been around for years and years, Campstrup found a way to address the areas that were not being uh, um, that were not being uh, questioned by the other people and the other technologies, the other manufacturers of the of AMI meters, ultrasonic meters. The Campstrip solution has been beneficial for us and, and is only going to improve as we as we continue on with the full city conversion. In fact, our our, um, our president and CEO are so impressed with uh, with uh, Campstrip as a solution. At first, uh, when we first uh, uh, were able to award the sole source to Campstrip, the idea was that it was supposed to be a 10 year city conversion. Uh, since then, even though we've been underway just a, a matter of, a, of a, about a year and a half, since then, um, he has since declared that he wants us to break that in half and at least make it to five years solution. So that's our next challenge is, is to uh, continue to, to uh, install these meters at a, at a faster pace so that we can receive the benefit of, of these AMI meters. So now I'll hand it over to Mike uh, from Mill Crofton, and he could tell his story. Thanks, Marlon Alfredo. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mike Jones. I'm the general manager of Mill Crofton Utility District. Um, we're in the Franklin, Tennessee area. Uh, we serve uh, Williamson County, and Williamson County is one of the most uh, fluent uh, counties in the state, and one of the most affluent counties in the top 12 or so in the United States. So. I have a very diverse population that we serve. Uh, we have currently about 12,000 um, meter connections. And uh, when we started this project back in 2017, 2018, there was about uh, there was 8,000 meters that we were planning on installing in the utility district. Um, so we had an AMR Neptune system, uh, about 7,000 meters there. And we had about 1,100 that were uh, old census meters they were converted over to the AMR um, meter reads. Um, so the different variations of Neptunes that we had, uh, we read various different digits, uh, and they were different variations in the, in the meter models as well. Um, so we had about 60 meters a month that were dying on a minimum, and we usually were probably uh, 80 to 140, and uh, one month we even had about 180. Um, so population we serve is about 32,000 people. So of those 8,000 meters, that was 
quite a few a month that we were having to change out. Um, so the employees had just lost faith in the meter. We even had some meters that um, weren't registering. If we went to somebody's house and asked them to flush the toilet, um, we had meters that uh, were actually reading backwards when water flowed through them. So we just uh, we just had lost a lot of faith in the Neptune meter that we had um, in service at that time. Um, so our number one goal was to find the best meter on the market. Um, I wanted a meter that my employees could believe in. Um, so we started doing a tandem meter uh, set of tests. We didn't have an outside engineering firm or anything to do this. We wanted to handle it in house. We wanted to find what the best meter was and I wanted my employees to have full faith in that meter. Um, so we tested various meters against each other. Um, because of the area that I serve, we have a lot of residential irrigation usage going on. Um, in the six to seven months that we have irrigation season, uh, I sell the majority of my water for the entire year. I have people that um, you know, will irrigate four hours, six hours a day. Uh, I mean, average bills can be 400, 800, 1200, and even a couple thousand dollars a month that they spend on irrigating their yards. Um, so uh, it was very important for us to capture low flows, obviously when toilets are being flushed. Um, I'm sure everybody would like to capture that, but also we wanted to capture higher flows. So uh, we had three quarter inch meters at the time that were actually five eighths meters, uh, five eighths meters and a three quarter inch meter set for most residential customers. Um, I wanted to go ahead and try to push that to a full three quarter inch meter to capture more water. Um, as most of you know, uh, meter manufacturers as they actually make meters, uh, they've actually reduced the size over the year. You might have, uh, our old 5 8 meters that when we first bought them might have been 25 gallons a minute is what they were rated for. And the Neptunes that we had at the end were actually about 20 gallons a minute. So I was trying to increase the gallons per minute that the meter could register. And so uh, that was something with the full three quarter that we were trying to accomplish. And so uh, I actually, in testing the meters, Camstrip kind of came to the table late because they were new to the US at the time. Um, and so I actually had somebody call and uh, want me to check them out. And I actually told them on the phone, you can stop by the office, but uh, we'll never have a plastic meter. Uh, that was just my persona of what, uh, what I thought about them. And um, they stopped by and brought us a handful of meters and said, we'd love for you to test them and short of throwing it on the concrete, um, see what you think. And so we actually walked up to our shop and uh, had a, a vice sitting there with a 24 inch, uh, with a three quarter inch meter setter in it. And we installed that uh, cam strap meter and he used a 24 inch um, uh, pipe wrench on it to tighten the nuts. And he uh, put more pressure on it than you would out in the field. And we, and we undid that meter. Um, Normally the uh, brass threads would have been all galled up, but uh, with those, with the, on the cam strap meter, it just had a few little cracks and a couple of the threads and it was still usable. So my guys uh, just were kind of in amazement and uh, we went ahead and put cam strap out there and uh, placed them in the tandem meter sets. Um, so once we tested those meters, cam strip was capturing the lowest lows and the highest highs on the flows that we were uh, testing with people irrigating or somebody that was just a maybe an elderly uh, resident that wasn't using much consumption. Um, and so we were uh, able to capture all the water that was actually going through those meters. So once cam strip was selected to be the meter for our system, uh, we wanted to go from AMR to AMI. And so um, we went ahead and did the propagation study and uh, sites were selected and we went ahead and did a uh, pilot study with Camstrup and, uh, and they were, we were actually the first US um, AMI system. So we uh, conducted that test and uh, began with a portable tower at first, uh, just to test the meat. Uh, so in total, I, have, I serve about 94 square miles um, so there's 14 uh, towers that we uh, had to purchase and put up besides using existing tank sites. So in total, I have uh, 19 uh, 
collectors out there from my entire system. I'm, I'm a very uh, hilly topography. Um, we have a lot of high uh, areas, uh, pressure areas where I might have 180 pounds in my system. And I have other areas where I might have 40 or 60 pounds of pressure in my system just because the topography that we serve um, and about nine different pressure zones. So, um, you know, there's a lot of areas that uh, might be over the hill or in shaded areas that we wanted to make sure that we were able to read those meters. And so uh, we went ahead and put up uh, these 14 towers because it was exceeding what was uh, stated that was needed in the propagation study because I wanted to make sure that we tried to capture 100% of our meter needs. Um, and we had to, uh, we went ahead and put those meter, uh, those 80 foot towers that we installed, we went ahead and put those in ourselves as a utility district. And so we did have to purchase uh, those, some of those tower sites and uh, they were 20 by 20 uh, easement areas that we acquired um, the property to. And um, then we had to, we put up the, by the 10 by 10 concrete pad to put these 80 foot towers that are uh, there on the slide. Um, we did go ahead and do a service line replacement upgrade. Uh, we wanted to make sure everything was kind of brought up to specs. We had some inline meter setters. Um, so we, we wanted to go ahead and put a meter setter where we had a check valve on them. Um, and uh, we started with that initially and we planned to put the Camstrap meters in at over five, 8,000 of them in a five month period. And uh, it took about six months in total to go ahead and get all those installed. Uh, my 10 year, uh, this is a slide here of the 10 year water loss summary. Um, so back in 2017, when we started putting the meters in, uh, there was about 216 million gallons of water loss in my system. Um, and, you know, as of to date, uh, this past year, we had 9% water loss instead of being up in the 20s. Um, and um, I attributed a lot of that to actually capturing all the water that is going through the meter um, on these high, high usages that uh, are occurring through these irrigation systems that are running wide open. Uh, we've actually seen through the calculations and stuff that uh, they're hitting the 32 to 35 gallons a minute, a lot of folks because of the hilly topography that we serve, uh, they will uh, have booster pumps in their irrigation systems as well. So uh, they are definitely uh, maxing out the flows on those three quarter inch meters. Um, but uh, on this, it, you know, we, we've worked hard on reducing water loss and uh, every, all my new meters that are installed in my system are the ALB, the leak detection meter. So we have uh, over 3000 of those installed in our system. Uh, the cost of the water loss. Um, so it was uh, upwards of $600,000 back in uh, 2017. And this past year at 9% water loss, um, we're down to just over 300,000. So less than half uh, of where we were back in 2017 and the cost of the water loss that lets us put a lot of money back into our system and other improvement projects and staff. And uh, I'm sure everybody uh, is always trying to find money to fund other projects. So. Um, it's been a great help to us in uh, reducing the cost of water loss. And um, I do wish I had a complete system with the ALD meters, but um, uh, that's the only, like I said, it's the only meter we respect in our specs moving forward. Um, we were able to, in the first 18 months of the camstrap system being installed, uh, we recouped over a million dollars in uh, additional revenue. Um, the uh, water uh, that was flatlining water purchase, um, even with growth in our system. And so the reduced water loss, uh, flatlining water purchase, uh, and then new customer growth, we were able to generate even more additional revenue um, just uh, selling the water that actually goes to the meter, which I can't stress enough. Um, so uh, we feel like the when we were doing our um, ROI on the system, we felt like we would be somewhere around the five years that we would, uh, would that we would be able to hit um, paying for the system in its entirety. So um, uh, it's uh, definitely highly recommended um, from Mill Croft. Um, and that's all that I have. And I'll turn it over to questions. 
Excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Um, if you haven't had a chance to submit your questions, please get them in. We'll answer as many as we can in the time we have left. And if we don't get to yours, we'll reach out to you directly afterwards. We have quite a few coming in, so uh, let's get started. Um, you mentioned embedded acoustic leak detection. There's other ALD technology on the market. What's the benefit to having it embedded inside the meter? Kevin, I'll go ahead and take that one. So there's a, a few there's a few benefits to having the the acoustic leak detection uh, technology embedded inside the meter. Um, it gives us the ability uh, because you have a meter a meter with that technology at every single resonance uh, in your system. It gives you many more uh, devices to collect acoustic data to be able to pull back that data in the software for us to analyze and determine where there are potential leaks in the system. Because there's so many out there, it gives you the ability to uh, triangulate where that leak is. And you'll when you send a crew out there where your correlation equipment, they'll have a much smaller area that they can uh, correlate to find that leak. The other benefit is these devices are out there listening for 20 years. So you're covering your system for 20 years it's a permanent uh, leak uh, distribution leak detection solution that gives you the ability to monitor your network for that 20 years. So in an area that may be relatively new and not have any issues today, down the road, 10, 15 years down the road, as those issues potentially develop, you, you'll then have that coverage. So those are some of the benefits of, of having that uh, acoustic leak detection uh, in, uh, technology inside the meter. Great, thanks, Joe. Um, this one's for Mike at Mill Crofton. Is there, um, sorry, you've been using the cam shop meters for a while. Would you say they're quality meters? Is there anything about them you don't like? No, and, and my staff still has full confidence in them. Um, you know, we just, there's so many benefits uh, quality wise. Um, I mean, they're, I still think they're the best meter on the market. Um, you know, they uh, I always tell people when they call and have reference questions to me, I always tell them that uh, sometimes you may get frustrated that uh, there's not something that you ask for from Camstrap immediately to come to the market or something if you want something special. But it's because they do so much in research and development and um, they might not just do everything the American way and want to just slap it out over the market. So uh, with them time testing and making sure it's proven and gonna be the best product that it can be, they're not gonna rush to put something out. And so I always tell people you can always uh, have full confidence and faith in, in their meter because um, it, it's, it does what it's supposed to do. And so uh, our, our staff uh, just has, you know, just customer service things that we're able to do with the AMI and, uh, helping customers with, uh, they think they had a leak and call into the office and uh, they can look at the portal and see it on the, you know, on their phone, smartphone if they want to through an app that we have available to our customers. But the ones that don't have that technology or don't use that technology of, of a smartphone or a tablet, um, they can call into the office and we can actually tell them and they'll call in, uh, maybe it's an elderly lady and she'll be calling in just to see if, uh, has my meter stopped turning because uh, I found uh, my toilet was leaking. And so we can see that that hundredth of a uh, gallon uh, is, is not flowing through there anymore to tell her that, no, it looks like you fixed your leak and you've got to zero, zero out is what we always tell them. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a great meter for us. That's great. Thanks, Mike. Um, this one could go to either utility, I suppose. Uh, is there any part of the AMI installation process you wish you had pro approached in a different way, i.e. lessons learned. Uh, hi, this is Marla at El Paso Water. You know, we haven't gone through enough of the conversion to really have a lot of challenges. Some of the challenges that we are being faced with is because of our terrain. Uh, the placement of our collectors it has been the greatest of challenges. And so we've had to start thinking out of the box as to what we're going to do as far as some of the uh, meter locations that are unable to reach a collector that may not be that far as far as proximity wise to them, but because it's in a low lying area, 
it cannot uh, it cannot communicate very well. So more than anything else, the challenges that we're facing are, are based on that. And is there anything I would change? No, if, if that's been the worst of my challenges thus far, then I'm, I'm happy to have that as my only challenge. If, if I can add, <clears throat> I think also the effect would be if, in a positive way. Uh, there's been some surprises mm -hmm. on the a AMI uh, connectivity. There's uh, been some meters where I would not expect uh, the connectivity to exist, but it does. Uh, there's been mis you know mistakes on our parts where antennas weren't placed. Uh, so you would assume uh, there's no connectivity, but the surprise, the, the, the surprising uh, effect is that it is. And the the thing is that commu the communication is actually rather strong, mm -hmm. even in some cases. So uh, I would say that there's there's both uh, goods and and very good positives even on. Uh, on places where we don't, we don't expect it. I, if I remember correctly, when we did the propagation study as to this collector was going to be able to have the range of, I think we were told four or five miles, I believe. We have we have meters that are communicating well over nine miles. The, it's it's just been it's been a, a very positive uh, experience in the in the conversion, and I I just look forward to completing this conversion so that we can see the the rest of the positives that are going to be a result from them. Mm -hmm. Excellent to hear. Um, so staying there in El Paso, uh, in Texas, where water conservation is key, can you share any more around how AMI will help with conservation efforts? For sure. 40% um, of the water that we supply to our community comes from the Rio Grande. The rest of it comes from uh, groundwater with the Waco Bolson. The challenges that we have as far as both are concerned is that the Rio Grande, by the time it reaches us, uh, is rather empty. It's, it's not a whole lot of water. Um, so water conservation is a huge, huge topic here for the utility. And so the ALD um, meters are the thing that are, are we, we have, um, uh, uh, what are those, uh, the, the ones that are on the, on the valves throughout the large main the main uh, lines, uh, there, there are these loggers that are also leak detectors as well. They, they don't function, they function sort of in the exact same way that the, that the uh, meters do, but there's only, I think from last I heard from our infrastructure, there was about 1,200 of them throughout our city. And we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles of line. And 1,200 of them, yeah, not so great. but when we have 240,000 of those small residential meters installed, couple that with the ones that are sitting on the main lines, and you have all of this communication going, and you're able to triangulate problem areas on which you know how to uh, how to uh, uh, schedule maintenance, and you can, uh, you can avoid a main break, well then, by all means, the ALD, it's gonna be, it's gonna be 240,000 data loggers, 240,000 of those little things speaking to us and telling us there may be a problem over here. And if you can just see the, the you know, which meter uh, it triangulates with the other meter with the other meter with the other meter, oh, therein lies the location of that possible problem. That, that, that line has been compromised. Let me go in there and let me send somebody out there to go and fix it and be proactive about the, the, the whole thing. This is why those ALD meters is absolutely crucial to our to our system and to water conservation. Not only that, the features that the that uh, the portal provides to the customers and to the utility, the information that it gives both of us, is something that is also very uh, um, very uh, valuable because it helps us to not only let our customers know that they may have a problem, and we we want to prevent their leaks at their properties, not just the service lines and, and mains. Of course, we definitely want to take care of that. But even property leaks is water loss. And so we need to make sure that everybody is fully aware of the fact that these problems can and will occur. It's just a matter of time. And what are we going to do about it? And let's get down to it and fix the problem uh, sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. And uh, so on the other side of that, uh... You mentioned how the new meters in AMI helped capture revenue, or more revenue. Can you explain on that a bit? Is that for El Paso water? Uh, yes, it was. 
Okay. But I figured um, Mike could answer too if he had any. Experience. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure he can. He's he's probably finished with his with his uh, solutions. But um, for El Paso Water, we have a program that is a meter exchange program. What happens is that every these meters go into the ground. These mechanical meters, these these PDs, go in the ground, and the program is that once they become 10 years old, we remove them and install a new meter. So I think Aleman touched on that a little earlier in, in his presentation where he dis, where he discussed where we're doing things proactively and reactively. Um, the meter exchange program allows a PD to go into the ground, a, a, manual, a manual meter to go into the ground. And in my opinion, those mechanical meters begin to fail the moment you install them. It's just because of the nature of what they do. The, the, the gears and those things, little plastic gears, you know, they, of course, they begin to erode away and wear away. And then when you have the water that El Paso water has with a great deal of sediment in it because it either comes from the river or it comes from the, uh, the, the Waco Bolson, it's got a great deal of sediment in it. It can wear away these plastic parts very quickly and mechanical meters begin to fail almost immediately. So when we were doing the, when, while we are doing the meter exchange program, um, it's it's um, it, the the important part is is that uh, we're ex exchanging them with the cam strip meters that are ultrasonic that doesn't have any move, moving parts in it and and uh, it's it's makes it makes it uh, so that when you're capturing all this revenue those mechanical meters start to under register almost immediately ultrasonic meters don't have that kind of a problem and so this is where in the additional capture of revenue comes from. And if, if I may add, also the, one of the one of the benefits to having uh, pretty much capstrap coming in uh, for myself also is uh, not worrying about what type of meter we need to uh, set for a type of premise. Uh, oftentimes, uh, engineering or someone makes perhaps a a, a decision either uh, from bad data or you know just from whatever present. Uh, situation is is currently there at the at the premise. Sometimes uh, a yard meter gets installed or a turbine meter gets installed where a domestic uh, service is existing or uh, perhaps a compound meter should should have been installed. Uh, usually, with the premise, uh, you know the functionality changes. There's it goes from commercial sometimes to, to residential, residential to commercial, or to heavy industrial areas. And then it goes back and back and forth. It fluctuates depending on what the use is at, at the premise. So you know, so oftentimes we also recognize that whatever meter is existing and whatever type is existing may not be capturing the full uh, consumption or uh, the use of the water. So with these cam struts, we don't really have to worry about that anymore. Uh, we're able to just install these cam struts and you know, for whatever application that it's going to be used for, it's going to capture what we need. I mean, especially the low flow, the things that, yes. that we have a hard time with with the turbines, it doesn't capture the, the low flow. Uh, compounds also, depending if it's ultra low flow, the, the compound will not, will not register that as well, but the capture meter will. Yeah, and, and a good example would be right now we're, uh, we're, we're looking at some um, build uh, apartment buildings where they install these compound meters and Currently, there's not enough residents in that building to engage that high side on that compound meter. So right now, that low is 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 being worked, and you it's working a lot. So we're we're actually going to go out there and exchange these to Camstrup so that we can uh, not have that transitional effect where 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 we're maybe losing some of that revenue. Great, thorough answer. Appreciate that. Um, this one's not directed at anyone in particular, but uh, wondering if you targeted underperforming meters when you decided what meters to change out first. How did you determine where to start? Yeah, for Mill Crofton, we uh, we started with our residential meters, um, but uh, we did notice a significant amount of water being captured once we started changing out our compound meters uh, to the new cam strip. Uh, being a single inline meter like that, it was, uh, it, we were able to capture a lot more flow on those as well. So um, we, hindsight 2020, we may have started with those compound replacements first, but uh, we did start with our residential meters first. Okay, great. Um, how big is the crew that is installing the meters and how many are you able to do a week or 
Are you using any outside installers? So um, currently I have a crew of about 74 that are doing the meter installations. And um, we're not using any outside outside uh, contractors to do the meter installation. In fact, I, I, um, I've kind of fought hard against that. One of the... <laughs> One of the things that we saw good old 2020 due to our utilities, we had a mass exodus of employees. And uh, one of the things that I was very uh, concerned about was uh, the meter exchange program and the, and the conversion and how we were going to have the staff to, to ensure that this, was, uh, this program was not going to be delayed. So I asked and I proposed and I was awarded uh, a, an incentive program to help with, uh, of course, uh, employer retention that uh, pertain to the meter exchange program that the staff would be given a bonus of uh, $10 for every meter that they installed, which turned out to be a lot less expensive, a lot more cost effective than hiring a contractor to do the same work. And also I could guarantee that my staff was going to do a better job than the contractor was because they have more, they have more uh, experience in our system, in our infrastructure than a contractor would. So um, how many are we able to go through in a week? Um, these guys can do uh, you can do some pretty amazing things. Uh, so at this time, um, I'm not too concerned about uh, completing the the full city conversion in, in five years. At this time, I, I would know that uh, the the remaining two hundred and fifty thousand meters can easily be done in the next couple of years. And regarding the the large meter uh, exchange, so there's. There's a, a small crew, but uh, <clears throat> they usually go in, in two pairs or up to four or five, depending on the size and uh, the circumstances of the meter. Uh, but it, it just depends on how the, the infrastructure is. We had a four-man crew, and they were doing about 300 a week. That's how our system was changed. Great. Okay, yeah. Never underestimate utility personnel. That's That's... Pretty great stuff. Um, how were you able to award the sole source to Camstra? When um, when we first signed Camstra on as our being the provider for our RF solution, um, I, as as I spoke about earlier, I had all these medians that I was trying to keep our meter readers away from, and I was installing all of these um, meters on the medians to keep the meter readers away from having to cross those busy streets. When, um, the, as they sat in there, we started doing that for, it was about three years worth. And the more and more and more of those meters that we had installed in medians, the more I wanted to use them in the outside county areas as well, instead of the Badger meter that we were using. I got permission to do that within those three years of that pilot. And then I kept getting phone calls from, if not uh, the from somebody in the executive staff that they received a call from, you know, community member that was very concerned about the water use and is there anything that we can do so i actually started using meters as data loggers because we had we had data loggers as well that we were having to use in certain situations that people had questions and concerns about their water usage so i started using the the cam strip meter somewhat as as a data logger and then extract the data that we had from that meter to offer to the customer so that we could say, hey, this is the problem. This is what's happening at your at your meter. After after three years of that, then my idea was to start to pressure the executive staff. Look, look at what this meter is doing. Look at the benefits that this is offering us. Look at how important this information is. And and after just I guess a, a another year or so of of um, me nonstop pressuring the, the executive staff and especially our CEO and vice president, uh, eventually I guess they were like, okay, enough of you, go ahead and go ahead and, and do the uh, full city conversion and, and we'll have Camstrip as our, as our sole source. Great, and uh, someone asked after successful implementation of the AMI, what happened to the meter readers that you had? As far as Mill Crofton, um, we were able to, those meter folks that were doing meter reading, uh, we just had, there's, as any utility or municipality may know, I mean, there's plenty of work to be done. So we were able to just use those um, to do other work that needed to be done in our district. 
Yeah, that's good to hear. Uh, with El Paso some water, worry about that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. With El Paso water, um, I know that there is a concern about that. One of the things that is true about El Paso water, I'm not so sure if it's true everywhere else, but our meter reading uh, staff is very much like a little conveyor belt. It's a constant rotation of staff incoming and outgoing. That's not the easiest job in the world. And so whenever uh, we always have a lot of turnover in our meter reading staff, whenever one of the things that, that it makes me uh, happy about the conversion is that the people that have been true to the meter reading department, which there's a good 10 folks that are true to the meter reading department, as people uh, leave the department, uh, as we lose people through attrition, then the hope and, and the, 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 the plan is that we're not going to lose meter readers. We're not going to not need, we will always need them. We're always going to need them, but we're going to improve their skill sets. We're going to make them meter technicians where they're going to have to do more troubleshooting, uh, more figuring out what it is, if, if we're having trouble with a communication with meter to the tower, if uh, there's something that needs to be replaced as in one of the little clip antennas, if it needs an external antenna, if uh, you know if uh, that the lid is the correct lid, that it wasn't buried with dirt or, or underwater, we have to do all these kinds of things. And the meter reading department is the one that's going to that's going to um, tackle those roles. And yes, just as just as Mike said, there's a lot of work to be done. It's not like there's not going to be something for them to do. Right. So uh, this question is somewhat related, but uh, maybe you can get a little more granular. Um, this person asks. I'm currently trying to set up meters uh, as their own department. Can you speak to how your crews are structured as far as position titles? Um, all right, so I'm, I'm currently, uh, I'm the utility meter shop supervisor. Uh, we, here at uh, my section, we basically uh, do asset management, but also uh, are in charge of the large meter uh, exchange program. So we do have two men crews that, that go out uh, every day to to go either exchange, test, um, you know, re recurrently, uh, they are actually titled as repairers. Uh, we're actually going to look, we're looking into evolving and changing their, their titles into uh, meter technicians. Um, there in the future, we're looking more, uh, well, less of small mechanical repairs and more uh, troubleshooting, uh, more uh, configuration, more updating. Uh, it's it's going to be the the nature of the job is expected to change, uh, with some some similarities uh, expected to to continue. But uh, for the most part, we are changing to technicians uh, more so than repairers, just because of the the nature of the meter. On my side, uh, I, I, as the manager, I have uh, the three supervisors, that the meter shop supervisor, I have the field supervisor, and then I also have the meter reader supervisor. Below them are the, um, the, the field supervisor has the inspectors and then the service workers. The meter reader supervisor, of course, just has meter readers. And then you have Aleman who has the meter repairman and uh, general, um, uh, general service workers. So, uh, the, the the hierarchy is, uh, and every last one of them, all of them know how to exchange a meter, but their skill sets increase as their as their job titles increase as well. Right. Okay. It looks like we have time for maybe one more. Um, this one was directed towards El Paso. Um, if it's not applicable, just let me know and we'll try something different. Um, how did you guys go about installing new meters on previously non-metered commercial customers? Previously non-metered commercial, commercial customers? Non-metered. Um, non that would uh, that would indicate that there is no metering previously and we're going to meter. Uh, no, here we, we just basically work with a new services uh, department. Uh, we start all services with a, a meter installation. Um, now, if a meter install is, is asked, we, we assemble the meter and um, water distribution section will come up, pick it up, uh, and install that line and drop that meter in there. If, if a meter exists, then we go out and exchange it. Now, if, if, if for whatever reason a service is dedicated to uh, become, or if, if a line is dedicated to become a service, 
um, there would be an application that would uh, need to be submitted. Uh, once it's submitted, then uh, we'll tap that line and um, and set that meter up. But uh, but pretty much uh, we just go through our new services, make sure that everything gets uh, set up properly. But uh, if, if a line is needed anywhere, we we can tap it and we can uh, we can set it up. Right, of course that makes sense. Um, and that about does it. That's about all the time we have for today. Um, audience, if we didn't get to your questions, someone will be reaching out directly to follow up. Um, this webinar will be available for on-demand viewing as well. You'll receive a link via email as soon as it's available. Thank you so much to all of our presenters. And to everyone who joined us today, we hope to see you again soon. From everyone at Water Online, take care and enjoy the rest of your day.